Anytime man just um, seeks to, to, to bring a message, uh, we have imperfections. You know, there's things we might uh, think we know, but, there are th- but, but when God shares something, he knows. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All Scripture, it is inspired by God. Other translations say it is God-breathed. It is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. That's another reason why people have to reject the truth, because it does not align with their relative perception of truth. So you don't want to hear a scripture that contradicts your life. But isn't it ironic, and I'm not trying to, to make up a song here, that, that they want to claim all the scriptures that make them feel good, but they want to reject the ones that don't make them feel good, that don't make them feel agreed with. It says the Bible is what tells us right from wrong. It corrects us when we are wrong, teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. And and you might want to say this, to do every God work. You cannot do what God's put you here on earth to do, and you can't even know what that is without God's word. Every scripture is God's word and and, and has purpose and, and power for each of us. However, in order for us to experience that, that life-changing power of the Bible, we must know how to, how to respond to it, what to, what to do with it, how to handle it in our everyday life. And so that's where this message is going today. If you've got your worship guide, please follow along if you can. The first note I want you to have today is this. When it comes to God's Word, you have to believe it, trust it, and rely on it. When it comes to God's Word, you have to believe it, trust it, And rely on it. Listen, knowing God's word is great. It's great if you could even, um, uh, you know, recite Genesis through Revelations. And by the way, there are some people who actually are pretty much able to do that. That's kind of crazy. My mind's not smart enough for that. But I want you to understand, it doesn't matter how much knowledge you have of God's word, it won't change a thing until you believe it. It won't change a thing until you trust in it, until you learn to rely on it. You have to put your faith in what God's Word says will change your life. And if you do, the Bible says that your life will not only be changed here on earth, but for all of eternity. John chapter 5, verse 24, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from life, from death to to life. Listen, God's word tells us the pathway to heaven. There's no other way that source that we get to truly hear this from that that ignites our faith. And that is, it, it says that it is by believing in Jesus. You can't get to heaven just by reading the Bible. That's why people say there's tons of people that have gone to church all of their life and their head is straight for hell. Because it's not a matter of your knowledge of God's word or your um, attendance at church. As they say, just because you you go through um, uh, a, a car wash, that doesn't make you a car. And just because you came to church and read your Bible doesn't make you a Christian. It is by believing in the word of God. Well, what does the Word of God say leads to salvation? It says that you must repent of your sins and believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Most important thing anybody can know right there. In fact, a child who only knows John 3.16 could, could give their hearts and life to Christ and already be ahead of other people who know many more scriptures. It says, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. It does not say you can earn your salvation. It does not say that you can ever deserve your, your um, salvation. But it says, by grace, through faith, and the finished work of Jesus Christ on, his, on, his cro- on the cross for our sins and through the grave and his resurrection, we are able to have the assurance that we're children of God. 
Look at John 1, 12 and 13. It says, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Now, something I used to say that just came to mind is this. I used to say when somebody said, well, man, I don't understand how so-and-so can be at your church and they did this and they did that or they're doing this. Or, and I say in the present term, I said, well, make sure you don't get church people confused with God's people. Church people are everywhere. But God's people, they, they've been marked by the Holy Spirit. They've been changed from the inside out. They have genuinely confessed Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. And the Bible says in verse 13, they are reborn not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Listen, our walk with God begins by our faith in the good news found in God's Word the good news that Jesus Christ came to sin, save sinners like you and me. But not only do we need to believe in God's word, we need to trust it. We need to trust God's words, and we need to trust all of his promises. Psalm 33, 4 says, For the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything he does. That's not just the, the words on the paper, but, but his plans for us. What he's doing even right now, when you can't make sense of what he's doing right now. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Do you know why sometimes it takes people being a granddaddy or grandma before they, they have a real strong faith? It's because the older we get and the more depleted we get of ourselves and realizing we can't put our faith in this world or our circumstances, we hold the word of God more tightly. Listen, I mean, my, my times of really reading God's Word, not to preach at you, but to apply in my life, most of the time happen when all I've got that I can depend on in that moment is His Word. And so we hold tightly to it. But the Bible also says we need to rely on it, and we can rely on God's perfect, holy Word. Psalm 1830 says, As for God, His way is perfect. The Lord's Word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. <clears throat> Something jumped out to me that I read about the psalmist, and that's this, that, that the psalmist doesn't just say that God's word brings a little hope in his life. Look at Psalm 119, 114. He says, your word is my source of hope. Like, like hey, God, I'm depending, and I'm hoping, and I'm resting, and I'm banking on every word that you've said to me and everything that you promised to me. But secondly today, when it comes to God's Word, you need to read it, study it, and meditate on it. When it comes to God's Word, you, and I'm talking about you personally, you have to read it, you have to study it, and you need to meditate on it for it to have the greatest, greatest um, difference-making power in your life. Now think about this. I'm not going to ask any of you to raise your hand because your doctor might be here today or something. But some of y'all... It don't matter what the doctor gives you or tells you. You ain't doing none of it. You ain't doing none of it. And you can ask my mama what I call that. You a bad patient. Not just a bad boy or girl. You, how in the world? My first question is, why did you go to the doctor? I don't understand it. Why would you come to church? Why would you waste your time on your faith if you're not going to live it out? I've told y'all before. I do not care about going to church and just acting like a bunch of monks and re reciting this and praying about that and yet not, not applying any of it. The Bible says that we need to, to read God's Word. Listen, the Bible does not need to just be sitting on a shelf or by your bedside or on an app on your phone. We need to read it, study it, and meditate on it. You say, why? Because God's Word, if you'll let it and if you'll study it, it will shed light on any important question or area of your life. It, whatever you need an answer to, if it's necessary for you to have to live out God's will, it's found between Genesis and Revelation. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word, it is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. It's the biggest flashlight ever made. You have to keep studying God's word so you can keep growing in his will. Some people don't understand why they're not continuing to grow. You can't continue to grow without increasing what you know. 
Joshua 1.8 says, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Listen, we need to keep meditating on God's Word, but we, we need to keep studying God's Word. Um, I, I've got a master's degree in, in biblical stuff, and I, my major was, was biblical studies in my bachelor's degree. And you know how, how much I know? About as much as a first grader. And I'm being serious, and I say that because of this. The more I discover life, the less I feel like I know. But I'm like some of you. I know enough to be dangerous. Um, I, listen, you don't have to know it all. You just need to know who does. One of the best things one of my um, uh, seminary professors said to me was he said, I, I'm not here, uh, men, to, to teach you everything you want to know. I'm here to teach you how to be a lifelong learner of the Bible, to keep growing. How many of you are going to watch the Super Bowl tonight? Just go ahead and raise your hand. I don't care who you've, you're, you're um, cheering for. You know, like, How many of y'all know it's not, it's not about the game, and, it, and it's also not about who wins. It's about snacks, isn't it? In fact, if your household is having... Um, Meatballs in a crock pot. If you want all those meatballs to be blessed, drop off 10% of them at my doorstep today. <laughs> One more thing that just is not in my notes. I rely on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Bless me. Some of y'all, I mean, every time you hear me, you should be like, God, if you can make that one a preacher. Man, I thought about this, though. For us, to, for us to play the game of life the best, for us to compete and, and to be all that God would have us to be, we've got to keep studying the playbook. We've got to keep studying the playbook. Like a quarterback on a football team, he studies the playbook. We need to know God's playbook to thrive. Psalm 1, 1 through 3 says, All the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. Listen, when you read and study and meditate upon God's Word and continue to do that. That's a day-in, day-out type of thing. Things will move from your head to your heart, and then it'll start changing your life, change the way you look at life, change the way you approach life, uh, change your confidence in life. But thirdly today, when it comes to God's Word, you must obey it, practice it, and build life on it. When it comes to God's Word, you need to obey it, practice it, and build life on it. Let, Billy Graham once said this. He said, let the study of the Bible become central in your life. Not just so you will know it, but that you will obey it. Jesus, whenever he gave us the Great Commission in Matthew 28, in verse 20, after he said, hey, you know what? Um, uh, you know, make disciples and, 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 and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then he says, uh, in, and I don't have it up on the screen, but verse 20, he says, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given. Some people think that you give your heart and life to Christ, and then you are changed as much as you can be changed right then, and you just sit here and you wait like you're at the bus stop, waiting to be beamed up to heaven. When really, you just got in the game. You just got on the team. And while that's a great privilege, it also comes with great responsibility. Okay, how am I going to live the rest of my life as a, a faithful child of God? We got to keep growing in, in what we know, but also grow in what we choose to obey and apply in our lives. John 14, 15, Jesus said, If you love me, obey my commandments. 
you could say this. You don't love me as much as you say you love me if you don't obey my commandments. Listen, when I think about obedience that God would have me to have towards his word, I'm not thinking, hey, what do you see? I'm thinking, what does he see? I'm not thinking just, you know, can I do this so I can try to impress others? But, but am I seeking to be faithful and obey God? You know, am I willing to jump when God says jump? Am I willing to turn when God says turn? That's something that the more you grow, um, the more you go because you're, you're trying to be in tune step by step. You want to be led by his spirit and you want to be led by his truth. By the way, while you're, while you're waiting to learn new stuff, because we're always learning new stuff, make sure you're applying the stuff you already know. Your life will never change just by gaining biblical information. Your life will change by biblical information application, not just information. I've told you the reason why many, many people proclaiming Christians and those in churches all their life, they don't seem to have much life change is because they are full of information. But until things move from their head to their heart and obedience into their own lives, there will be no transformation. James 1, 21 through 23 says, so get rid of all the, the filth and evil in your lives. And humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts. For it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. Listen, many people quote scripture here in the southeast, but most don't strive to live it. It is, listen, it is only when you, be, when you um, believe it and begin to obey it and apply it to your everyday life that, that your faith takes flight. Like it's no longer, hey, this is what mom said. This is what dad said. This is what the preacher says. No, this is what I believe, and this is what I'm going to live by. Luke eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus replied, he said, but even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Jesus says not only do we need to live, um, you know, to, to, to please him, but we need to, to live a life, if we're wise, built on God's word. Like, like the foundation of your life, like the foundation of a marriage, the foundation of a family, the foundation of a career, the foundation of any ambitions you have in this life, they need to be grounded on the word of God. They need to be um, built on, on what's solid, that, that whenever um, life happens, and it always will for all of us, that the foundation underneath you doesn't give way because it's solid. It's, it's, it's grounded on, on, on the Lord and his word. Matthew 7, 24 through 27, Jesus says, All who listen to my instructions and, and follow them are wise, like a man who builds his house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floods rise and the storm winds beat against this house, it won't collapse, for it is built on rock. But those who hear my instructions and ignore them are foolish, like a man who builds his house on sand. For when the rains and floods come and storm winds beat against his house, it will fall with a mighty crash. If, 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 if you want to see the foundation of people's lives exposed, Watch what happens when somebody's life is rocked to the core and they aren't standing on the solid rock. They don't have the assurance of promises beyond their circumstances, beyond their feelings, their emotions. You know that the Bible says that, that, that we can't find lasting um, happiness apart from God's Word. Psalm 119 verse 35 says, Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness is found. If you're human like me, there's plenty of times where you want to think that certain things that you could have or do in this life would fill a God-shaped void, only to go, well, that still left me empty. That still made things not feel quite complete. And that's because th those are maybe things and endeavors that we might seize in this life, but they aren't the eternal word of God. They aren't things that are true. Yes, listen, here's, here's the cool thing about God's word. 
It's right yesterday, it's right today, and it will be right forevermore. Just because people don't believe it doesn't mean anything's changed. But fourth of the day, when it comes to God's word, you need to crave it, consume it, and take it to heart. When it comes to God's word, you need to crave it, consume it, take it to heart. You know why so many claiming believers aren't thriving in their walk with God? You, you need to write this down. Um, they are spiritually malnourished. They are spiritually malnourished. And by the way, the reason why you have to keep craving it and consuming it and what have you is because what you already knew years before, it might have helped you get through that, but you needed more to get through this. And so you have to keep growing to be able to, to get beyond the, the things that you're dealing with and so that you are, are strength. Your strength is there so that you are, are nourished as you should be to be able to take on the, the constant arrows of the evil one. First Peter 2.2, 2, it says, like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. If you are one of those people that genuinely want to experience all God has for you, you cannot deny his playbook. You cannot get there just by saying, I'm going to be a spiritual person. I'm going to think positive, and I'm just going to pray occasionally. All those things are good, by the way. All those things are God. But the Word of God, it gives us a, a substance that, that nothing else can. It, it, it gives us the nourishment that we lead. Listen, many believers in Christ, they spend their entire Christian life, grown people in a diaper. Don't you think it's, it's kind of crazy that we see that in Scripture, that, 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 hey, you know what, let's not spend all of our lives spiritual infants. We all need to, a daily diet of God's Word. We need to con consume it. We need to eat it. We need to eat His words of life, Matthew 4.4. 4. I, remember, I remember my mom. I know some of you remember this, and if you grew up in church, I, I remember my mom having, as long back as I could remember, um, uh, the uh, little things that looked like a, a, a piggy bank, sort of, but it was made like a, it looked just like a small loaf of bread, because it was the bread of life. Some of y'all remember that? And, uh, and by the way, even though my dad was the pastor, my mom, my mom led out the home devotions. Love my dad. My dad never led one home devotion. My mom did, and that's why. Listen, you know what? Moms, a lot of times, you're, you're the one that, that God, God has put you with those children oftentimes more than, than, than dad or, or just in a different way that, that you, you connect or, or relate. And, but, but I think going all the way back to years before, even before I knew how to make it my bread of life, you hear me? I knew what my mama was swallowing. I knew what was making the difference. I knew what drove my mom and dad's faith, and it was faith in the Word of God. Matthew 4, 4, Jesus said, The Scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know what Job learned as he was going through all of his suffering? That the Word of God was as important as daily food. In fact, he says this, Job 23, 12, I have not departed from his commands, but have treasured his words more than daily food. More than daily food. Something that I strive to do now in my life that I did not always consistently do before is to make sure that the best of I can, that the first words into my mind and heart are his word. Even if that's just one scripture, that's usually really my goal is, first of all, have I, have I at least read a scripture for my own personal digestion? And have I sought to, to study that and, and to meditate on that? Listen, when it comes to God's word, though, you have to take it to heart. You got to keep eating it. You got to keep swallowing it. You got to digest it, not only into your mind to renew your mind, but into your heart so it can control your life. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, when your words came, I ate them. That's the scripture of why 20-something years ago, 
I decided to call my Bible watermelon. True story. And now some of y'all know my craving for banana pudding, so I think I'm going to go on record today, Brother Ronald, and decide. My Bible is banana pudding and beyond, okay? Banana pudding, that's hard for me to say. Banana pudding don't hold a candle to God's Word. You got to get to where you, you realize that the Word of God is so pivotal to you being able to have God's peace and, and live out God's purpose that you delight in it. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, Lord Almighty. I like that part. It says, I bear your name. Do you know who the word of God's for? The people of God. If you call yourself a child of God and you aren't um, seeking to read a word from God, you are disowning the manual that was written just for you. And it's written for everybody, but until the lights come on spiritually, until someone comes to know Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord, um, we don't have the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ in our lives. The Spirit, by the way, that Holy Spirit that comes to live within us as believers, that Holy Spirit is what helps us understand God's Word as He reveals it to us. Listen, only when we allow God's word to renew our minds, to lead our hearts, do we stay on the path that God has created for us. As soon as we ditch it to the side and we say, well, hey, you know what, I feel like I got enough gas to go a few weeks without it. You'll find yourself gassed. I've had it happen to me many a time. I, I, and, and I'll tell you what, one, one of the um, scriptures that you've heard me say before that I rest on, I literally rest on it as one of my greatest levels of, of wanting confidence when I don't have confidence in anything else. And that is to, to keep remaining, like John 15, 5, I am the vine, Jesus says, you are the branches. If you remain in me, you will bear much fruit, but apart from me, you can do nothing. If I have to choose one thing over anything else that I could ever learn as a pastor, I know I need to learn how to walk with God myself. I got to make sure that my relationship with him is, is right so that my relationship with others can be all that it's meant to be. Psalm 119, 10 and 11 says, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Listen, the more bread of life that you get into your head and into your heart, it will get into your life. The more you meditate on that, you'll be in a moment, you'll be in a, in, in, in a time of, of deception that the devil is trying to bring to you, and God will bring to mind scripture that counters the deception. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're like, okay, now I know why that scripture was there. The enemy really is roaming around looking for those he can devour. I really do need to, to, to pray, pray, pray. I really do need to keep leaning on the Lord. I really can't do anything apart from Christ who gives me strength. Now, I'm closing today. I want you to remember this. Never forget, times change, but God's word never will. Never forget that times change, but God's word never will. That's very important to note today, and here's why. Every generation wants to change the truth to suit their way of life or their viewpoint in life. Listen, it, you don't go to God to give him your view. You go to God to get the view. Oftentimes, we're telling God what we believe. Listen, just because we believe it doesn't mean it's true. Just because it's agreed upon by most of the world doesn't mean it's true. Just because you've always felt that way or I've always felt that way does not mean it's true. Billy Graham said this. He said, the Bible is God's book of promises. And unlike the books of men, it does not change or get out of date. Matthew 24, 25, Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will never pass away. Romans 15, 4 says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement that they provide, we might have hope. I can't think of anybody, no matter how close you are with God, 
that doesn't need daily encouragement. God doesn't only want to use his word to guide you. He wants to use his word to encourage you and to help you know there is always hope when you're building your life on his word. Would you bow your heads with me today? Dearly Father God, today I pray, Lord, that, that, that the message you've given me and the scriptures that you've written, Lord, might be tattooed in our hearts. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that if there's anyone that's not yet trusted you, Jesus, as their Savior and as their Lord, God, that today would be the day that they confess you, Jesus, to be their Lord and Savior, that you, they believe in their heart that, that, that you, Jesus, died, Lord, on that cross for their sins. And Lord, after you were buried, you were resurrected from that grave on the third day. Lord, giving us the opportunity for eternal hope even through death, even over death. Lord, I pray that anyone who has not yet given their heart and life to Christ, Lord, today they would do that. Lord, I pray for others, Lord, that they know Christ, but they just are not right now, Lord, um, really abiding in your word. God, I pray that, that you might nourish them. Lord, continue to grow us all and take us and develop us into who you created us to be. Give us a love for your word. Give us a love for you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us, please, today? This altar is open. I'm available here should you want to come and pray with me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the 